David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Uh, today I have a pen that was lent to me by my friend Andres. Uh, he has lent me pens from time to time to review, and I appreciate that. Uh, this particular pen actually went on a bit of an adventure in its journey to me and caused uh, quite a bit of concern. Uh, typically, I'm very aware of the status of uh, any packages on their way to me. Uh, and Andres had let me know about the tracking number and when it would arrive, and for some reason I, I kind of forgot about it. It was scheduled to arrive on a Monday, and uh, when he contacted me on a Wednesday asking me to make sure that, or asking me if I had made, received the pen, I, I had not. Uh, it hadn't arrived, so I began to uh, to panic. Uh, that uh, I checked the tracking, and it had been delivered to my house, it said. Uh, I interrogated everyone in the house to make sure that uh, the package uh, had arrived, and they claimed it had not. Uh, that, you know, I had a fear like it was stole out of my mailbox or something like that. I'd never had anything happen to me like that, but you never know. Um, what I did find out is that I called the post office and when there's actually tracking on a package uh, and the carrier scans the package, the physical location of where it's scanned is uh, tracked within three feet. So they can check to see the exact location it was scanned to see if it was delivered to your neighbor's house or your house or something like that. Well, they looked up the data and lo and behold, there had been a substitute carrier on that particular day and they delivered the pen to a different house about two miles away from me on a street that sounded somewhat close to mine. So uh, they actually sent someone out there to that house and uh, uh, the people that were there might have been out of town or something because all of their mail was still in their mailbox. So it was basically sitting in their mailbox outside for, for three days. So needless to say, I was very pleased and relieved when I was finally able to get my hands uh, on the pen. And uh, Andres was relieved as well. I'd never had anything happen like that before. Uh, you know, sure, there was insurance, but I would have felt guilty if someone had lost a pen they sent to me, even though it would have been no fault of my own. So, what pen did I finally receive? Uh, it's from Mont Blanc, and that is the Meisterstück Ultra Bla Black Legrand. Um, what I'm going to do is go over the parts and the features of the Ultra Black Legrand, talk about uh, what I care for and what I don't care for, show some measurements, size comparisons, and then provide a writing sample. Uh, Mont Blanc's Meisterstück line was introduced back in uh, 1924 and has been their flagship line ever since. Uh, Meisterstück is uh, actually German for masterpiece. Um, this is the pen. Uh, it is essentially the same size as the 146 Legrand. Uh, there are some very minor differences in regard to size. Just first of all, here it is in comparison to that. So you can see they're very similar. Um, you know, we're talking about tenths of millimeters in, in difference of size, nothing you would really notice. Um, and that, uh, you know, the weight of the Ultra Black is about two ounces heavier or three ounces heavier due to an increased amount of uh, a metal in this pen. Uh, but there's a few other differences in this pen as well from the 146. Uh, the main difference is the cap and the barrel material. Um, the material is actually, or the pen is actually made of precious resin, but they have sandblasted their precious resin to create a matte black finish. Uh, now, they say this is done to salute the beginnings of Mont Blanc. Uh, some of Mont Blanc's first pens, like the original Roger Noir, were made of uh, matte ebonite. Now, uh, I haven't held one of those original models, so I can't speak to how accurate of a representation is, uh, but I do really like this matte finish. It creates a, a very unique uh, visual as well as tactile experience. Uh, you know, in regard to symbiology, uh, it's been said that uh, something like a shiny black represents elegance and sophistication, and a matte black represents mystery. So, um, here's what the matte finish actually looks like up close. Uh, you can see the variation in texture. Um, just as a uh, comparison, here's a close-up of the uh, polished resin, resin of the cap on my 146. You know what? Now, you really never uh, notice how scratched up your pen is until you get it under a microscope. Now, my 146 is one of my very few pens that I've purchased used, so uh, I choose to believe that every single one of those scratches were on the pen when I received it. That's what I choose to believe. Uh, all the trim on the Ultra Black is ruthenium plated. Uh, it has a, a very nice dark gray look to it that I feel matches up well with the rest of the pen. You know, I don't think a stealth-like pen would look the same if it had bright silver or gold platinum plating or something along those lines. Uh, ruthenium is uh, closely related to platinum. 
the gentleman who discovered this element actually wanted to name it after his homeland of Russia. So he came up with the name Ruthenium, which is uh, derived from the Latin name for Russia, which is Ruthenia. Ruthenia? Ruthenia? I'm not quite up on my Latin pronunciations, but you get the idea. Um, let's go ahead and start here at the finial. It has the traditional Mont Blanc snowcap or snowflake, whatever you choose to call it. But what's kind of cool is that the snowcap, as well as the surrounding black, uh, both have that matte finish. As you can see here, the material isn't quite pure white like it is on uh, a standard Mont Blanc pen, uh, and I like that feature. Uh, the finial is ruthenium uh, plated and uh, has a serial number, and then it transitions into the traditional Mont Blanc clip. You know, their clips and bands are all one piece, which I've always liked. Um, the clip is in identical size and shape to that of a 146, but I did notice one difference. Uh, on the underside of the clip on my 146, it's stamped with PIX, P-I-X, but on the underside of the Ultra Black, it says Made in Germany and Metal. Uh, that's something that they've changed over time. Uh, the cap actually angles up slightly to the cap band, and the band actually has two extra pieces of metal. Uh, you can see here how it compares to the 146. Now, one of the things I noticed about this particular pen, and Andres noticed it as well, is the cap kind of wobbles a bit. Let me see if I can actually see that. You can kind of hear it. I'm not sure how well that shows up on camera, but it's a little bit annoying. Uh, you know, neither my 149 or my 146 have this kind of movement to the cap. Um, there's an angled step down to the barrel, which angles up kind of ever so slightly. Around here is the big point, or the the, large, the thickest point of the barrel. And then tapers down to the end of the pen where we have a ruthenium plated piston knob that has a smooth rounded end. The cap twists off to reveal this very nice ruthenium plated 14 karat gold nib. Uh, on the nib, it is stamped with 14, or I'm sorry, 4810, which is the uh, height in meters of uh, the actual Mont Blanc in southeast France. That's uh, kind of located close to the Italian border. Uh, it's the highest mountain in the Alps and uh, the highest mountain in Europe west of Russia. Uh, it's also stamped with a unique looking STOD mark. Um, this is actually a jeweler's hallmark. Um, and a hallmark is actually named because uh, particular guilds uh, met in their old guild halls, thus a hallmark. Um, this particular marking has been on Mont Blanc nibs since around 1992. Uh, and then here's a look at the plastic feed. Now, Mont Blanc doesn't stamp the size of the nib where you can see it. It might be hidden down below, uh, but uh, I'm not quite sure the reasoning behind not having a small marking to indicate the size. Uh, you know, between manufacturers, a medium or a fine or a broad could potentially really vary in line width compared to other manufacturers. So it would help to have a marking on there. Um, they do actually arrive with a sticker on the piston knob. So, you know, it is still on this pen, but if this was my pen, then that sticker isn't something I'd necessarily want to leave on. Uh, you know, it's a little strange because I have like this uh, uh, Pilot, which is uh, a, uh, which one is it? This is the 743. Uh, and that I leave the sticker on this one and it doesn't really bother me because it has a specialty nib and there's a lot of Pilot that looks very similar and having the sticker on here helps me remind, what, remind me of what nib is on this pen. Um, and even though this sticker is just a single M, uh, it would just bug me a bit. You know, the sticker does have a bit of texture to it, so if you left it on, I guess it wouldn't be too bad. Uh, but uh, it would be nice if they marked their nibs. The section is actually a polished resin and doesn't have the matte finish. Um, it is really a nice contrast. Um, the section kind of angles up just slightly and transitions into the cap threads, uh, which are not sharp at all. And then we have the ink window. Uh, now, for me personally, I, I don't particularly care for Mont Blanc's ink window and find them that helpful. Uh, when the pen is uninked like this one, you can definitely see through the slats. But I find that when it's inked and the ink is sloshing around, coating the inside of the barrel, you know, personally I have a hard time seeing the ink level unless you really hold it up to a strong, bright light. Um, I mean, it's okay. It's better than having no ink window at all. But as far as its functionality, I've seen better. 
Um, this is a piston filler, and it does have a very smooth mechanism. Um, I have some pricier pens that, you know, I feel like might break when I use the piston mechanism. They just don't feel as sturdy, but I don't get that feeling with this pen. The materials used are very high quality, and other than the cap moving around a bit, uh, are extremely well crafted. The Ultra Black actually feels very good in the hand, um, even with the, a couple of ounces uh, extra weight of the ruthenium. Uh, it's very well balanced, and it's plenty long enough to use unposted. Um, the cap does post so deeply and securely, uh, and really doesn't add that much weight, uh, so that I really don't find that it throws off the balance, and I have no problem using this pen posted at all. Now, this is a special edition, which means while the pens aren't necessarily produced in a limited quantity, they are produced for a limited time, which was actually 2000, in 2016. So since that time has passed, it will become increasingly difficult to actually find these pens. But uh, I have noticed that they are currently uh, still readily available. The retail price for the Ultra Black Legrand is uh, 870 US dollars which is quite a lot. A standard 146 Legrand sells for around $705 on Mont Blanc's site, so this one comes at a bit of a premium. So does the Ultra Black justify the premium and the $870 price? Well, now, when you purchase a Mont Blanc, you are purchasing more than just a pen. You are purchasing a status symbol. Uh, whether or not you buy into that is a personal choice. You know, I, I've never had anyone approach me when I had an expensive Nokia or Danny Trio or even Pelican in my pocket. But I have had people comment on the Mont Blanc I had. Uh, even lay people recognize the snow cap. You know, a while back I was mailing a pen to someone internationally and uh, you have to like write down what you're shipping and declare its value. And the person behind the counter saw it. I had written down that it was a pen and asked, is it a Mont Blanc? Mont Blanc had done a very good job of building and maintaining the image and brand value of their brand. Now, I do own a 149 as well as a 146, and I enjoy them both tremendously, but I didn't come close to paying top retail price for them. I purchased one uh, used and another one at an auction. So personally, I kind of value craftsmanship and materials more than status symbol and marketing. So it would be very difficult for me to pay full retail for this pen. But when you purchase a Mont Blanc, if you want it new, then you're gonna to have to pay that premium price. So, uh, you know, I wanted to thank my friend Andres for the loan of this pen. Uh, I really do like this matte finish. Uh, you know, I wish more pens would offer that option. So, now it's time for some measurements, size comparisons, and then a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Mont Blanc Meisterstück Ultra Black Legrand. Uh, in regard to some other black pens, uh, here it is with a Mont Blanc 149. Then here it is with a vanishing point in the matte black finish. Uh, and then here it is with a Pilot 845, which has a, uh, a Rushi lacquer finish. Then in regard to pens that are not black, we have a Canalea Nui Nalu. Uh, then we have a Delta Stantufo Oro. Uh, and then finally, we have a Visconti Hall of Music Red, which is their uh, rock music pen. So here we have the Mont Blanc Ultra Black. And this has a 14 carat nib, and this is a medium. And the ink that uh, we're using, well, uh, you know, it's not necessarily exciting to show in the review that I, I thought that I should use a black ink. So I picked out one of my favorite black inks, which is Sailor. Kiwa Guru. This is what the bottle looks like. Uh, now, 
I know I've complained about this several times in the past, but while this bottle looks nice, the design of the Sailor bottles really leaves something to be desired. Um, they, you know, they do have a little plastic insert in here, which is supposed to uh, pool the ink, but uh, it really doesn't cut it. If you have a, a nib of any size, that it really is not going to fit in here. Uh, that. You know, I had to, and for this, to, in order to fill this one, I actually had to transfer this into a, a sample vial in order to get a fill. If you have a converter, you can get away with sticking it uh, in there, but with a piston filler like this, you really don't have that option. So, Sailor, you make some very good ink that I like very much, uh, but, uh, you know, I'm really not a fan of your bottles. Uh, here is actually what the actual ink looks like um, you know it's it's a very nice solid dark black now when I actually started off with pens uh, you know I really wasn't into ink that much but I was into black inks and that you know as you can tell here by the wide variety of black inks that I have you know um, I bought most of these early on and that, uh, you know, I haven't purchased a bottle of a black ink in quite some time. And I know that to some folks, all of these really look the same, but uh, there are some subtle differences between these. Bang. For the memorial ribbons? No doubt. Which one floats your They're all black. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe to the layman, Jerry. Obsidian, Onyx, Midnight, Lost Soul, Rolling Blackout, Sleeping Panther, and Void by Armani. Hey, Jerry, does this look black to you, too? <laughs> okay, on with the rest of the writing sample. Uh, I do find this nib to write a bit on the fat side of medium, uh, that with no pressure and increasing it, you can get a little bit of line variation in regard to here. The nib does have a good deal of tipping on it. Uh, I do find it to be a fairly wet nib. This is a, a decently wet ink, but you can see that, um, that it's a fairly wet nib as well. In regard to reverse writing, Uh, it actually works very well uh, and lays down a, a nice, you know, uh, kind of almost like a Japanese fine line. And in regard to some fast writing, there's no problems at all. Um, that I find this nib to be very smooth and very pleasant and, and overall I really like the the quality and materials uh, of this pen other than the cap twisting a little bit I don't know if you can get a good view of that but uh, other than that uh, I, I really like the craftsmanship and the materials in regard uh, in, involved in this pen so my thanks go out to Andres again for the loan of this pen it'll be heading back to you soon and I hope its journey back to you is uneventful so thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you later bye bye little Sebastian miss you in the sand Five thousand candles